NMS eLearning Systems is proud to present our lead consultant, the DLA Guru. The DLA Guru has been successfully contracting with the DLA for the past 20 years, and he is poised to provide end-to-end -end B2B consulting services and professional training services to empower our clients with effective strategies and repeatable contracting solutions to gain an edge in winning both supply and or service contract awards through the Defense Logistics Agency and the U.S. federal government. This video training segment will showcase one of the many methods derived by the DLA Guru to assist our students and clients on how to best unlock the powerful functionalities of SAI Global's Logicom and Opportunity Manager Data Management Online Software Tools for increased success with winning federal supply and services contracts through the DLA and the U.S. federal government. Grab a pad and a pen, sit back and relax, and learn how the DLA Guru empowers our clients and students on being successful with the DLA and the U.S. federal government. All right, fantastic, fantastic. Well, hey, thanks again for, you know, your interest in being uh, a vendor with the DLA and learning, you know, the nuances of how to be successful, not only being a vendor, but being successful uh, with uh, doing business with the DLA. Uh, there are a lot of levels to the DLA, you know, and so uh, even with the master class, it was kind of more of an overview just to kind of get you started. But then as you dive in, become, uh, get more abreast to who the DLA is and understand the nuances between the different divisions of the DLA. And even when you do get contracts awards, how to service those awards, how to do the labeling, the packaging, shipping, the invoicing. It's just so many levels to it. But once you figure it out, once you learn how to ride the bike, you will ride it forever. I mean, okay. it's just, it doesn't change that often. It's the federal government. So, uh, which is pretty cool about, you know, uh, doing business okay. with the DLA. So, yeah, uh, cool. yeah so today um, we have uh, an hour's worth of time to pretty much answer any question that you have. And uh, keep in mind, you have an additional 30 minutes that you can utilize, probably not today, uh, because I have some other meetings after this one, uh, that okay. if you want, to spend that time uh, talking about the software that you downloaded yesterday, or you want to talk about other things, you know, it's it's up to you. So you literally have an hour and a half of my time. Uh, but today, uh, it's for the full hour. So if you want to, whatever questions you have, I'm here to answer. Okay. Now, as far as the software, I didn't download anything yesterday. I mean, I paid for it though, but I didn't see anything as far as downloading. That's what I thought we were supposed to do today. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, once you once you clicked to buy it, there should have been a link in there that allows okay. you to actually buy the to download the software to your computer. Okay, okay, so I'll check that out then. I'll do that. Was that was that was that something I should have done already prior to this call? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Dang it. Dang uh, but no, it's but I can help uh, with that though. Uh, okay, that'll work. Now I've never done it as being a customer. So um, I would say that you probably need to go back to the HECdistribution.com website. Yes, sir. Uh, and if you want, um, the, soft, the, the, the Zoom call allows me to share your screen and to actually right. control your screen as well. If you'd like me to help you install. Yeah, we can definitely do that then. Yes, sir. We can do that. Okay. Okay. So here, what I'm going to do now then is we're going to say share someone's tendency. So I've given you the ability to share your screen. And then there's another option that's going to give me the ability to control your screen as well. But okay. you will have control and I'll have control. That way I can move your mouse around and, and kind of help you out a little bit. Okay. Did I do it? Is, is that, did All I right, do it? I'm, I'm seeing your screen, which is good. Now go to the very top of the screen. There's another little menu that should pop down at the very top. So take your mouse all the way to the very top of your screen. Okay. Yeah, there should be like, keep going all the way to the very, very, keep going to the top. I'm at the TV top now, I can't go okay. further. Okay, cool. All right, and the, do you have a little menu that says view options? Uh, maybe I need to blow this up here. Oh, right here, let me do this. I'm going to request remote control. Okay. So I'm going to request remote control and you something should pop up. Okay. okay, cool. All right, cool. So now I can also control your screen as well. So um, when you... When you when you bought the software yesterday, did you get an email from the website that basically you know uh, gave you your your pay, your receipt? Yes, I did. I did get one. Uh -huh. All right, open that email up because I'm curious to see if there's a download link in that email. 
Okay, uh, that'll be connect my connect down the phone. Okay, that's going to be right over. Is it this one here? Yes. All right, and oh, there it is right there. That one. Uh huh. So scroll up. Here, let me help right here. All right, so here I'm. I'm it may have up. been. Okay, right here. Okay, that I'll control. Right I'll, yeah, I'll control it from here. Okay, so, I see. It. Here's your download link. So we'll go ahead and click on this download link. Okay. And I'll, I'll do everything for you here. And okay. what this is going to do is download it. And it's downloading right now. Cool. And it probably downloaded it right here. We're going to open the folder. Now, let me ask you a couple of questions before we install this software. Okay. Are you you be the only person utilizing the software or do you have other people in your team that you want to use it i'll be the only one sir okay all right so what we can do initially uh is there a place on your computer or on your hard drive that you like to typically store your programs and things i like to put things in my my documents or put it on the desktop either or okay so let's do the desktop then uh well you know what? let me do this let me open the desktop in a new a new window open in a new window okay uh, this is where I kind of typically like to do that. And then on your desktop, we'll just create a folder. And if it's okay, I can call it NMSE Learning Systems. Uh, hold on here, my fingers are big. MSE Learning. We'll do that. And then what I'm gonna do is just take this folder here and I'm just going to just drag and drop it right over in here. This is a zip folder that we're going to unzip this software okay. into, into this folder here. So it's an executable that opens it up and what it does is going to give you when I double clicked on it, it's going to give you installation instructions and this is the bundle, the bonus the NMS data mining software tool. It I won't really benefit you until you get your SAI global account up and running. Right? right? So for today, we're going to be working on just that uh, the NMS uh, pricing tool for today. That's what I recommend. Okay. So I'm when, open. Mm -hmm. when, when, when can I expect a call from that representative for the SAI? Yeah, uh, I did after our call, after our conversation yesterday, Donald, I, I did contact them again and let them know that you know, you're anxious and ready to rock and roll. They okay. haven't responded to me as of yet. I would imagine, like I said yesterday, Give them 24 to 48 hours to respond because they're over okay. in London and things. And so uh, typically their onboarding is within, you know, 24 to 72 hours that I've seen. Okay. Uh, we've had some other clients who have, have gotten onboarded. And so, yeah. And, and then from there, it's just a matter of when the client, you know, wants to fill out the, fill out the you know, the information that they're requesting, things like that. All mm -hmm. right. But, but you are in the system. So it is coming. Um, and I'll follow up with uh, Kate, my contact again to see if she has any updates i i do have a meeting with sei global tomorrow okay uh, where they're going to be having a debt uh since we're, we're getting so many folks that are registering they're going to have a dedicated onboarding specialist that i will be able to work it, work with directly uh um, so okay i think what's happening is this is kind of a new process and so they were mm -hmm. still trying to figure out their workflow uh Understood. so yeah all right but so okay let, let me get back in here so uh with your software there are these installation instructions here that kind of tell you what to do. Like in the future, let's say you get another computer or something like that and you want to install it. So it kind of tells you, you know, how I'm going to do it for you now, but it's, this gives you step by step of what to do. And your admin, uh, your username is admin, your password is one, two, three to get you started. So just FYI, that's also included with your software. All right. Yes, sir. So I'm just going to minimize that for now. And then we're going to go into the executable. And so when you double click that and you go on debug, it's already installed on your computer and into, into this desktop folder. So like mm -hmm. your database will be, is housed within here. All right. Okay. And so your executable file is this parts management app right here. So what I recommend you do here is we're going to, um, do you, do you like having like little items down here in your. Yeah. You can set it down there. That's fine. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to drag and drop a thumbnail if it lets me. No, it doesn't let me do a thumbnail here. I got to create uh -oh, I gotta create a thumbnail for you. So we're going to copy 
And typically what I do with thumbnails, I just paste them to the desktop, makes it a little okay. easier. Show more options. Show more options. Yeah. There you go. Paste. Yeah. Well, we want to paste a thumbnail, uh, not the actual software itself. Okay. So hold on here. Let me go back into the internet. Maybe I didn't click the right thing. MS Learning Systems. Oh, hey, I thought we had unzipped this thing. Ah, I think I know what's happening. Okay. So let me do this. And then we're going to extract all. <clears throat> And we're gonna extract it in there, extract. Sorry about that. Okay. No so problem. I think it, did it just extract? Cause uh, I dropped my phone on this, that was happening. Yeah, I think it did extract. All right, cool. So now what you have, you have your zip file and then you have your actual folder here. And I think, now we should be able to copy since it's been extra there it is so even the app now has the icon so that's what okay happened. so we're gonna copy uh and then what we're gonna do on this other one uh, go to desktop I paste a shortcut man it should say paste shortcut i remember doing that all right, well, hmm. And then it show more options right there, maybe? Yeah, so show more options. Oh, uh, okay, we wanna create a shortcut. Okay, I got it, so this is what we gotta do. Uh, so we don't want it to reside here. We're gonna delete it from there. And then we're gonna go back up, I'm sorry. I think I'm kind of just moving a little too fast here. I want to go down to this guy here and then we're gonna show more options and then we're gonna create a shortcut okay all right now that shortcut we should be able to drag and drop it and place it down here typically you can do that i don't know why i'm not gonna let you why it's not letting me all right let's just open it up real quick then and then um here i'm gonna, I'm gonna remove this shortcut i don't like to have a lot of shortcuts let's just load this I'm, I'm gonna just launch the software uh and hopefully you have the latest updates to your computer where it will um be able to launch this software sometimes you have to download um like a plug-in or two to make the software work okay uh, mm -mm -mm. thought i just said install okay let's try it again Microsoft Defender Smart prevent an unwrite app from starting. Run this app might work. Oh, I, see, oh, I clicked don't run. I didn't read it. <laughs> info, run anyway. Okay. Yeah, run anyway. All right. Uh, okay. Um, so we have to get this software here. So here, this won't take but a second to, to download this. Okay. Uh, let me do this. I need to get a notepad. I'm going to launch a notepad real quick. All right. I want to write this in here. <clears throat> Micro soft dot ac uh, capital ac ace rather you know what and i think what i'm gonna do is have them install this plugin into the downloadable for future customers to okay. make, it, make it even easier so this is good to good that we're doing this matter of fact give me one second i want to make note of it on my on my end as well that we're going to do this okay and don't worry if our, if our time goes over a little bit, I, I got a little time for you today. I just- That's fine, okay. And I really apologize too. I should have had that download out on what I was thinking. I saw it up there, but yeah. I said, well, maybe she was waiting to do it together though, but I wish I would have had, well, if I would have done it, then I probably would have had issues like this, right? Yeah, yeah, you needed me today. Okay, it's not allowing me to uh, come up out of that screen there for some reason, but here, one second, let me see if I, right, perfect. All right, I want to get this. I, I want to get the name of this thing here. It's called Microsoft because I won't see this on my end. M I C S O F T dot A C E dot O L E D B dot one two 
guys. Zero. Zero. All right, cool. I put it on my machine as well, so I can just make a note to do that. So, okay. and this, oh, you know what? Uh, it's still, well, hold on. I think it's still good to d download that, but let's see if it lets us in. So I'm putting in your Would, would that allow me to change that username or can I just stay right there? Just use it as that user, admin, this, and 123? This is your default username. And once we get into the software, you then can create a um, unique username for yourself. Okay. All right. And so since the icon is here, I think you can right click on it now and pin the taskbar. And so now you'll have it where you can easily just click the click the icon to load it anytime you want to get in here. But here, let me click here. Okay, it's still giving us this problem here. Un okay, uh, admin. One, two, three. Log in. Okay. All right, so this is what we're going to have to do. All right, it's not going to let you log in until we download this software, so I was right. All right, so we got to do this, and the best way to download the software is we're going to add a tab. Uh, I don't know how we add a tab here. Oh, I'm on the left. I'm on the uh, in the left margin. You see the plus sign at the bottom on the left or is it the left? Uh huh. There, oh. you, there, there you okay. go. Okay. All right. So we're gonna just drop that in there, and um, we can get it from. Uh, I think you can get it straight from Microsoft, but you know what? I typically like to do this, and I'll check the word download. Uh, and do you know if your machine is a 64-bit or 32-bit? 64-bit. Okay, so we we'll put 64-bit in there, and that should be an easy link. All right, I probably go straight to Microsoft. Was this a trusted site? Yes. Um, and here is the database in just uh, redistributable, and I, I I basically selected both of these just to get both, you know, so you, just in case. Right. All right. All right. And so while this downloading there and what it'd be good for you to have in for your in the future is to go ahead and drop it in here as well. <clears throat> so you'll have it in here. OK. All right. So we'll just open it up as a that guy. Allow. So it's downloading multiple things there. Open that up. And then, uh oh. Downloads. And then we want to get a messy learning system at the same time. All right, so we got one that's downloaded. I'm just going to just drag it and move it over here so you'll always have it. And I think this other one must still be downloaded. I think that this is, this, this should be sufficient. So we'll go ahead and install this. I just okay. double on it. We're going to put yes for that Microsoft answer. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Cause my screen went black. Okay. All right, cool. Um, and then we can click next. Mm, yeah. All right. Well, you probably have to click next and install it yourself. Cause I guess whatever it's doing is cutting off my ability to control and you can click accept. Okay. Yeah. I can handle that and install. Uh huh. <clears throat> and luckily, we won't. We shouldn't have to reboot your computer or anything like that either. All right. Okay. All right, and then that's that. Hit okay. Yeah, click okay. All right. Um, so I should be back in there controlling it. Fine. Now, where is my icon? Mm, he disappeared. All right, so no problem. We can go back in here, go into debug. Double click on this guy. Okay. He loads it. Yeah, sometimes you can right click and say, well, see, it says unpin, but I, I don't know why it's, I should be able to move this. You may have to unlock your taskbar or something like that in order to move your icon. Okay. To where it's always here because anytime it's on the other side of this little little bar here it means you can't do anything mm. so i don't know if your taskbar is locked or not but just fyi that's how and okay. then i'm going to just type admin now we type one two three and 
we should get in. All right, great. So once we're in, so that's all, the little piece of software we needed. Um, now, when you're in the in, NMS part pricing tool, the first thing we're going to do is going to make this more, more, you know, uh, more unique to your company. And what's the name of your company? Okay. The Marshall Group LLC. Okay, the Marshall Group LLC. Like that? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. All right. The address is really irrelevant. And the contact, these, these details are really irrelevant. That's just... Okay something that's there but you'll see once you do that now it changes it to the marshall group up there yes sir that okay. makes it a little bit more custom customizable for you um i don't know why it has that okay yeah good now the next step then marshall uh, uh donald is to click on the first icon here or the first um selection which is the part pricing sheet there and it is i remember that right there i know what that looked like there it is <laughs> yeah, so the, that's the part pricing sheet there. And so uh, what you'll notice here by default, it's, it has log 31 in there. And I'll, t I'll explain to you what that is in a second. So we're going to click uh, output. And mm -hmm. then what we're going to do is refresh. And the reason why it's log 31 is because there are 30, 30 test logs that are in there. But okay. you have unlimited logs. And so what these are is just kind of when we were designing the software, just doing different tests and stuff and eyes. So these log files, you can actually delete or keep. Um, I would suggest deleting them because they don't really mean anything. Yeah, I don't need them, I would delete them. Yeah, and so all you do is highlight, but the thing is you gotta delete them one by one. And so are you sure you wanna delete, boom, you know? So even okay. when you're using this for yourself, you know, um, and so it's and not spent all time, but you, you'll see that you can just literally select whatever row that you don't want, click the okay. delete button, and it removes it from your database, right? Okay. And so your next log file that's available to you is going to be number 31, you know? Understood. Yeah. So what we'll do is hit refresh there. And what I'll do to kind of show you how the power of this software, now you got the window function. Now you can switch between this window and your output window. All okay. Right. Your output window, you can download this entire sheet as a spreadsheet, as a CSV, or you okay. can, write, you know, that way, this is where you're going to be storing all of your solicitations that you bid on. And you're going to create this huge database as time goes on of solicitations you bid on, your quote number, who your vendors were, the national stock numbers. And so this is a great database just to have like a historic a history. And you can literally create your own product catalog of national stock numbers that you sell to the DLA. And so it's just okay. a good place to kind of store all that data. And when you get awards, this is a good place to go. So for example, let's say line item 30 was a solicitation that you bid on. And you're like, okay, I got the award for this particular, you know, national stock number, right? Mm -hmm. so you will look that your log file number is 30. So when you go back into your NMS part pricing sheet, you can edit and bring up log file number 30. And what it will do is bring up all the information that you had loaded in there prior. So you'll know who your vendor was, you know, like you have like this little notepad, you can put any kind of information you want to remind you of certain things. I mean, it's just really inclusive information. Like everything in these fields is what you'll need to bid DLA contracts. Right. All the way from, even if you have what's called a, uh, it's, it's first article test, but we put it, you said four article test. So if you have a first article test opportunity where the, you're doing a custom manufactured part and you got a mom and pop manufacturing facility that, you know, you get them the drawings and they give you a price and they say they can build it. And then you bid that to the government. They may say, hey, we need to test that part before, you know, we put it on an airplane. So then you can let the government know up front, you know, your vendor will tell you what it will cost to do, uh, you know, like one run. So they may say, hey, well, our bid is for a thousand of them. And you say, well, I don't need a thousand. I just need like one of them initially for the government to feel comfortable before we do the thousand. And then they'll say, well, that price is going to be this, you know? So that's kind of how you do first article tests. That might be more than what you're, what you're asking now, but that's what this little functionality down here is for. Okay. And, then, uh, and here again, you know, this is where you'll put in your vendor wholesale unit price. You put in the past award price, what your markup is going to be, and then it kind of kicks out to tell you what your profit is and all this good stuff. It's a great tool to kind of manage all that. Now, you had also asked about creating a custom account. 
So I'm going to go into users and feel free to type in a username that you will remember and that you that you would like to have. Okay. All right, and then go ahead and go to the, yeah, and put your password in that you want to remember. Okay, cool. Now, so with this, Marshall, um, if you notice, this is a great functionality because it allows you to uh, create other users that can have access to your database. So, for example, okay. our team, we have about 10 folks that have access to our NMS pr pricing sheet database. And they all have their own user profiles, and we have the actual uh, software sitting on a cloud account. And so everyone okay. has access to the cloud account from, from different places in the country. And we all put all of our information in one major database. So this allows you to manage what users, you know, what you want users to be able to do. You may want to have people just reading reports or whatever. You can just check or you know, uncheck the boxes to allow them. But as long as all the boxes are checked, they're, they are considered a super user. So you are now the super user of this, of this uh, software, right? Okay. So once you click save, you say, record record it successfully and then what you do you can close out of this we can clear this and now what we can do is log out now where's the log out log out of this now log in as your new user that you just created m-a-r-s-h-a-l-l Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Okay, log in. All right, great. So now yeah. what you would do is click on home. So every time you log in, you'll have to do that. Just click home and just kind of let the software know what do you want to do. Boom. Okay. And so you're logged in. Now that admin and one, two, three is available. You can't change that. That's by default just to access okay. the database. So keep that to yourself, but that's if you forget your own username and password, you always have the default admin one, two, three to get in there. Got it. Okay. All right, cool. So that's that. Now that's the software in, in in a nutshell of like just the functionality it's you know it's not really complicated it's a real simple kind of um, gui interface and a microsoft access data powered by a microsoft access database mm -hmm. that allows you just a, a place to store all of your solicitations okay all right and pretty much so, i'm just plugging plugging and playing at this point i go back and forth to the other to the other uh, software i'm plugging and playing yeah, you plug it in plan. So, for example, um, in the in the event that you got a solicitation that you want to work on, have you found any that you are interested in bidding on dibs? Since you, yes, sir. Yes, I am. Okay. And uh, they wanted eleven ninety three, one thousand one hundred ninety three of these uh, face shields. Okay. And I got Fantastic. I got an estimate and everything. Okay, okay, so let's go on to dibs real quick. You can control the screen now because I, I, I wanted to go into dibs and bring up that solicitation real quick and then show you how you use the software to help you price things out. So can I just minimize this now? Yeah. Okay, so minimize. I've got dibs already open, ready to go. That's the wrong one. There we go. And I'll go home. Shall I log in? Yep, yep, you can log in. Okay. You got dibs. We're in. All right, you're in. All right, fantastic. Uh, and Marshall, hey man, as time goes on uh, and the and the DLA sees that you're active with certain NSNs or FSC codes, they okay. will be sending you things offline and saying, "Hey Marshall, here's one specifically for your company," and you'll see it on this home screen from time to time. They never send you an email. It's just as you log in, you'll see these opportunities that come, you know, and they're pretty okay. cool. It's almost like a sole source award opportunity for you. But okay, uh, where, where, where would that be? Like in this section right up in here? Uh -huh. that be at? It'd be right in this section there. Yes. Okay, cool. I like the sound of that. Okay. Yep. All right. So go ahead and type in your solicitation number, uh, copy and paste it in there. Okay. I got the, uh, let me see I got the thing here. And we know what? We're not going to do a fast track quoting on this one because once you put it in, it's going to take you to your quote sheet. So uh -huh. what I really want to see, let me go, let me go home real quick. And you can actually, if you have the NSN number, that might be even better. Yeah, I had it right here in my fingertips. Okay, here it is here. I found it. 
uh, MSN number. I got it right here. Okay. Go ahead and read it to me. 4240 hyphen. Uh, for some reason, 40. I don't know why it's okay. 4240 hyphen. 01. 01. Hyphen 324 hyphen 2004. 2004. Like that? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. I just copied that there. And so. What I did basically is went to the home screen and I just clicked that, you know, search for solicitations. And what's so cool about dibs, of course, you know, you can search for things, you know, various ways, but I typically right. like to search for it by the NSN. So we're going to search and it shows you, there it is. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this versus the fast track quoting, because I want to look at the actual solicitation itself, okay. right? So there's the quote button and then there's the solicitation. And so we're going to go ahead and take a look at the solicitation. So it's going to be a PDF document that's going to load. Okay. And this is where my questions come in. Once it load, and I know about the the approved source with with, with, the, with DLA approved on it, correct? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so what if we don't see a source there? Do I just get online and try to find it? Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's that's a couple of things that we'll be able to uh, tackle and, and I'll answer all those questions. Um, all right. So the way that you would utilize the solicitation, if this is one that you want to bid and using the part pricing software, what I would do first is I would uh, okay eh, highlight the solicitation number. And so we're going to go back into your part pricing software here. And what we're going to do here is uh, yeah, it's not as responsive as I would imagine that this software would be. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is Zoom. Zoom is not as responsive, so there's a little bit of a lag. Um, okay. But so what I'll do first is put in the solicitation number. Right. All right. And so now it's asking for the product title. So we're gonna go back over here. Oh man. <laughs> okay. It's like it's when they click on everything that I put my hand on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll scroll down and uh, let me. I'm gonna open this up a little bit more. Okay, cool. We got the whole thing there. All right, now what we do is scroll down and we're looking in section, and I wanna make this a little bigger. All right, so we're gonna take this down and <clears throat> going to look in section A. So section A of these solicitations, because, you know, that's where the power of SEI Global software comes in, as you well know, uh, mm -hmm. that you can get it all in one place on their, on using their, their, their tools. But conventionally, they give you past award information right here. So it tells you that the last time the DLA bought this was 2000, uh, September 9th, 2009. Let me scroll down. Okay. Yeah. So what this does is pass award. So they, they awarded it to this cage, this company cage code. This was, this, this was the contract number and this is how many the, the DLA bought and at 1250 on uh, September 9th, 2009. So now what we do, we go in here and we say pass award price was $12 and 50 cents. All right. So at least we know that. So now we can begin kind of filling in some of the blanks. In the part okay, I, got a, I got a question for you go, go further because you lost me a little bit though. My question is, you was on the bottom line there when you got that twelve dollars and fifty four cent. What about the top line at twenty two nine oh nine? See it up top, they got it for eleven dollars and ninety five cent. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you know what? I went the wrong direction. I'm sorry, sir. Right uh, at the top. I'm, there we go. Yeah, okay. we got to look at the most recent. Okay. Yes, yeah. sir. My mind. I saw two thousand eighteen here, and then I don't know why my mind did that. So yeah, you're right. It's eleven ninety five. I'm sorry. Okay. Roger that. Um, okay, so eleven ninety five, and you can see that the price hasn't changed all that much in the past, you know, uh, ten years, you know, or more. Okay. You know, it went from twelve fifty, and, and it fluctuates. Another thing to look at too, Donald, is to see how many different cage codes are being awarded. So this wow. you know that the same companies are winning this thing every time. Every so, time. What I try to do is understand who my competitors are, so I'll get their cage code and go research. It. I'll okay. Pull up who they are, where they're located. Using SEI Global software, you can actually start to track them and see what other business that they're getting with the DLA. 
it's mm -hmm. really good to know who the competition is because you can start piggybacking off of them and stealing business from them if you have the ability to get the better pricing, you see. Okay, so, so how would that work then? That, that's an important question that I got for you. How would that work to them? I know I understand, you know, you the case code, take the case code here, put it over there, then they tell me more about that company, but how do I negotiate and will and deal with them? How do I steal it from them, like you said? Well, you're not gonna be able to will and deal with them because they're competing with you. Um, they're my competitor, right. Yeah, so it's just kind of, I always just like to know who my competitors are. And, okay. you know, you'll never know their source or how they do business, you know, unless you take a job and go work for them or something for a while, do a little SP okay. or something. But I always kind of like to know who they are because it kind of helps me to understand what my margins can look like. Okay. Because especially if you're seeing how it, in 2009 it was 1250 then there was a period where the price really dropped and dipped down and then it started to kind of build back up again. And you'll see like this cage coat back in 2009 OR, like he came in and then he kind of just got out of business, whatever happened, you know, maybe the owner of the company died or who knows, you know? Okay. And so okay. then you start to see the new, the new, the new kids on the block, you know? So now you got, you know, this guy, 5HQV, I don't know who the company is, but that's 2018. Yeah, so now we got this OW, which he was back here, back in the day, you right. know, for 857 of them, he was charging 658. Now for 812, he wanted at 1150, 1195, you know, maybe COVID okay. is taking the prices up or something, who knows? Right, and then I got in touch with Granger and Granger gave me that full price again. Granger was actually 2255. Yeah, so Granger is not always the cheapest. Right. Uh, he, they're not always the cheapest source, uh, but there is a hack with Granger as well, and I can I can disclose some of that to you today as well. But okay. as far as the part pricing tool, let, let's continue. So we got the we got the competitor analysis there. Now what we want to do is get the national stock number, which is here, and so I'm copying that, and then I'm gonna drop it in here. I typically like to put my my hyphens in it because it's just easier for me to see things when I have my hyphens. So I put okay. my hyphens there, and then down here, I, I I make that my SKU number as well without the dashes. Okay, that's something that internally. That's not something that you have to be live by. You can give it your own internal part number, but that's just what we do. So you'll see it says NSN number without the dashes. That's just an internal SKU number that we that we track things with, right? Okay. And then uh, back to your sheet, we're gonna get the product title, which is gonna be Face Shield Industrial. Okay. They got it written out better down here. Now, would that always be in section B of this here uh, paperwork? And I know section A was the past hit procurement history. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. The DLA, they kind of keep things the same. <laughs> okay. Uh, most For the most part. Now, but it's still good to read the sections because they do throw little nuances here, here there. Um, so once you get good at, when you look at enough of these, you'll, your eyes are just scanning and you'll know when things are different, you know, when something's new in there and when something's not, you know, mm -hmm. it, it'll just come with time. Okay, and so then they tell you the two approved sources. So Granger, as you know, is nothing but a distributor, right? Right. So Granger has gotten good. They're representing another manufacturer and chances are the manufacturer is IDSC Holdings, but we'll figure it out in a second. So what I like to do is just kind of take this information here, uh, highlight that, copy, now we're gonna go back to our part yes. pricing tool and just, I just dropped that information in there, right? right. So now they're telling you that the manufacturer, that the approved manufacturer source is Granger, but they're not a manufacturer, but you know, that's how Granger is so cool. They figured out how to get the government to think that they're a manufacturer when they don't manufacture anything. Okay. Uh, and this is a way that Granger keeps the business locked with their company as well too. You know, that's another hack uh, mm -hmm. that you'll learn as time goes on. Uh, and then we'll put, see, I'm just populating everything with their cage code, their unit of measure. So you go back in here, unit of measure is each. So I'm just populating each field. And by the way, if you don't populate these fields and you try to save, it will give you an error message and say, hey, you're missing information. The reason okay. is these fields are very important because once you get an award, you're gonna have, you're gonna, you're not gonna remember what you did a month ago. So it'll right. say all this, well, it, you, it seems laborious now, but it's gonna come in handy. Now the okay. unit of weight, you know, you can put whatever weight you want, but you got to put something in there. We'll just say one pound. One pound. Mm -hmm. One pound in there. UPC code, we can say NA. There's probably no, no no need for that. This is if you need this type of information. 
and the delivery days, if you see here, the government is requesting that they want, if you get awarded, what will be ideal to the government is that you can deliver okay. within 38 days. But you're right, not, yeah, I see that. you're not, you're not mar married to that. Whatever you bid to the DLA is what it will be. Okay. Right? So they say, hey, if you can deliver in 38 days, that's great for us. But it may take you 60 days because this is, might be a COVID item that you don't want to get caught up in undercutting yourself from a delivery right. perspective. Because if you fail to deliver it when you say it, they will put a, 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 a negative rating on your delivery score. Okay. All right. So I always lend to, hey, make it as long as you possibly can, but still stay competitive. So I try to stay within 30 to 60 days uh, right. whenever I'm, I'm, I'm bidding contracts. But again, that's that's you have to know your vendor source to know, you know, if that is feasible. So we'll just put 30 in there for now by default. Okay. All right. And um, and so then the next step is to figure out the at the delivery. So in the solicitation, they'll say delivery point, delivery FOB origin. Origin is a good thing. Origin means that the government will pay to ship it from your home to them or your office okay. to them, I should say. All right, meaning, or they will pick it up from Granger. But if you're buying this directly from Granger, Granger won't allow that. I can tell you okay. that. So okay. So Granger's gonna have you. Sh they're gonna say you. I have to ship it to your office, and then you handle it. And the government comes and picks it up from you. Understood. All right. All right so in here, you can put FOB origin. Origin means to chain means that you don't have to worry about factoring shipping into your quote because the government's gonna pick it up. But you're gonna have to factor shipping to get it from your vendor to you. All right, right. so sometimes, you know, if you do real well with Granger, you can get in as a as an authorized reseller. You can sometimes get free shipping from Granger to wherever your facility is. Okay. But it takes time and negotiating and working with Granger and building an account up with them. Um, so like, for example, we have free shipping with Granger because we've been doing business with it for a long time. Um, right. But uh, okay, so that's that and then, now you have pretty much all of the standard like information that comes from the solicitation. Now the next thing is for you to get your pricing. So you mentioned Granger. So let's go to Granger's website real quick, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of a hack for Granger. Okay, I get it. See right there in the left. I already got it pulled up for you. See the G on the left margin. Uh, That's Granger right here. Up here. Uh, no, no. Come on down right where you where, where you oh. highlighted Granger on the uh, 22 pages. Look to uh, the left of that, that margin. Now come to the left where you want to open up another tab, so to speak, and just go up. Oh, down in here? Yes, sir. See so you right there. Oh, okay. All right. There yeah. You go using to my car right there. there. Right there. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. I'm glad you got it. Yeah, That's I know. That's the breakdown right there, what they gave me. Ah, okay. So uh, here, before I do that, I just want to just go at the top level for Granger. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you this little hack. So in here, Granger shows you that their manufacturer is MCR Safety. Mm -hmm. That's the company that makes this product. So even though the DLA is calling out for Granger, they really want MCR Safety. Ah, okay. All right. Now, MCR Safety may be a division of Granger or something of that nature and things, you know, but that's where SEI Global Sovereign, man, I can't wait till you get onboarded because you can do a search for MCR Safety to see if they even have a cage code, okay. <laughs> which is uh, kind of cool. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can search like the SBA's databases and try to figure out they got a cage code or something or go to SAM.gov or something. But it's it's cool. And it, once you get onboarded, you're gonna we're going to link down and I'm going to show you the power of SEI Global and how you can really get into the source. And okay. uh, to the point that if MCR safety has a, has a, believe it or not, uh, with today's training, oh, okay, well, let me, I was going to do a screen share on my side and kind of show you how, how, how we could do this. But from this perspective, what I would do, I would highlight MCR safety. And then I would just go ahead and make a note of this for yourself and say, okay, you know, they're representing uh, MCR safety. I'll put that in the, in the parentheses, in, in the parentheses, and their part number, part number, is the Granger number. Right. Normally, whenever it's the Granger number, Granger has a contractual relationship with this company. They're, they okay. be, they may be making it custom or something for just for Granger, you know. 
um, because normally when you go on Grage.com, you know, they'll give you the actual manufacturer's part number, you know, manufacturer model number, it'll be a different number here. Okay. All right. So this is probably something just for Granger. So Granger is telling you your price is 2241, which is higher than the past award. But you know, if you want to go with Granger's price and just put it in here and say, Hey, I could buy it direct from Granger for that price. But let me give you a little hack. Granger has another, uh, sister website. I want to just create another tab. Okay. See, I don't know where all your tabs are hidden at. Uh, they're, they must be, oh, they're in here. Yeah, they're on the side versus the other uh, uh, Microsoft Edge, they at the top. I'm using okay. two like different systems. Okay, no problem. Okay, so let's go to this other vendor called Zorro. Are you familiar with Zorro? Uh, I think I heard of it, never, never logged on though. Okay, so Zorro.com is a subsidiary of Granger. Okay. So it's sort of like if you drink beer, you know how you have you have uh, Michelob, it's the, higher, it's the more premium beer, and then you got you know Natural Light was the cheaper. Right. Believe it or not, well, Bud Light and Natural Light is the same beer. I used to work for Anheuser Busch, but they okay. got different price points. And so this is what Granger has done. Granger on their site, Granger.com, they have their price as a premium, but on this other site, you can get it cheaper. So here's mm. the same exact item. Same part number, same this. Guess what price you get it for from these guys? $18. Wow, $18. Okay, 18 <laughs> Now, do me so, a favor, uh, uh, Mr. Hendricks. Put, yeah. Can I can I hit my favorite right there? I want to save that. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yep. So, Zorro.com, if you're buying Granger items, it's better to go to Zorro. Now, okay. the thing with Zorro, they, you can never negotiate cheaper. They, okay. We've tried for years. They won't. You know, it's it is 1891 is what it is, and then they tell you it ships in one business day. All right, so they okay. have it in stock. All right, so now what we do is go back to here and say, hey, we're gonna get we got this quote from Zorro. Z O R O. Okay. And then what I would do is put in Zorro's. Zorro has their own internal number, which is this number here. Mm -hmm. And then I would say Zorro. Now the problem is they could change their price tomorrow. And so what you want to do is reach out to Zorro as a company and okay. get a company account with them and are and send them a request for quote that they will email you back as a PDF and they will lock their price in for 30 days. Got it. If you do okay. it this way, just on the website, you're not locked into nothing. No contractual rules. All right. So that's another thing about the DLA, you know, because it could, it could take 30 to 45 days for the DLA to award this contract to you. So you want to make sure that you can keep your pricing firm for that price, that time frame. But for the sake of the, today's training, what we're going to do is put 1891 in here. All right. And so I'm uh, going to put, so we just save some money. <laughs> Okay. By going to their sister site, but that lets you know how much of a markup Granger has on things, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the competitor that got it down to eleven ninety five, he more than likely is buying it straight from the source, or this other company which is IDC IDSC Holdings. Okay. This might be another company where you can go and find them too. And so what I typically do, uh, uh, Donald, is I'm gonna go straight to Google real quick. So we're gonna open up another browser. Okay, where did we get that uh, that IDSC source from? From the, so, the solicitation. solicitation? Right, gotcha, okay. It was written in the solicitation. So I'm just gonna right. drop that in there and I'm just gonna do a Google search for IDSC Holdings and just see if anybody else is selling this particular product. Okay. And it looks like they're searching you on Yahoo. So you, I, you know, I, I, I'm more of a Google guy, you know, but just for the sake of- Me too, of I hate that Yahoo. I always go to Google first and then I pull up Google, then I can go to it. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, so you know, it's IDSC Holdings LLC. And, you know, here, let me, let me go to Google. Um, Cause yeah, this being, it just makes life difficult. Yes, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. There you go, that's, that's what I normally do. There you go. Okay. I'm just curious to see what Google says about this. All right, so now what they're doing, um, this might be a Snap-on Tools product. So yeah, I think IDSC, IDSC Holdings is the parent company for Snap-on. Okay. If my memory serves me correctly, but we can go to Google Shopping real quick. And I'm just curious to see if anybody else is selling it. You know, nothing's there. 
I, I'm thinking that what this is going to be is going to be, um, yeah, the Snap On. Now, Snap On is a, a company that you can reach out to and see if they will allow you to become a dealer. Um, okay. I know we are not a dealer of Snap On. I want you to explain to me, sir. Is uh, so how does that manufacturer slash dealer work? Could I get I'm getting confused between the two? Okay, so the manufacturer is basically you know the company that makes the product. That's making it. Okay. And dealer, you would basically be a dealer of the manufacturer. You know, so they would give you there like there are three tiers of pricing. There's tier okay. one, tier two, and tier three. Okay. So tier one pricing are companies like Granger. Are mm -hmm. like Walmart. Walmart and Granger are buying straight from the manufacturer, so they're considered okay. a tier one distributor. Okay. Tier two would be what you and I would be in that respect, as it relates to this product, where we would be buying it from another master distributor. So we would be considered a tier two level. Okay. So the real goal in this game is to become a tier one distributor, but a lot of times, you know, Granger has deep pockets. They got warehouses. They do a lot more business, and so they may have a minimum obligation to do $100,000 a year with that brand. So okay. it's sometimes it's difficult because of the price points, you know, just how much business you have to do to be a tier one distributor, right? But you may find mom and pop shops because the DLA has, thousands, I mean, there are millions of NSNs, you know, that are yes. the DLA. So the opportunities are limitless. It's just a matter of you putting in the sweat equity to kind of get into that tier one distributor position and finding the right in a sense that work for your business. Okay. So like I said, you know, you're a medical equipment provider. So, you know, I would just start, especially when you get SAI Global, going through the brands that you know, that you can get access to, you know a little bit about it. And okay. then to populate your 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 filter or your, your, your net to catch those fish, you know? And so right. that, that'll come down the line. But anyway, back to this. So Snap-on is the, the the manufacturer of this particular face shield, and you'll right. see on their direct website they have zero you know zero dollars here. Why I you know I don't know maybe you have to log in to see your pricing or something or whatever. But this is how you can contact you know just give them a phone call. Hey Snap, hey I'm interested in buying this product in bulk. You know I want to buy mm -hmm. however many units it is. The solicitation which I let's go back here. We weren't done with the solicitation just as of yet. And so the total quantity is 11.93. So back to our mm -hmm. part right tool, we're gonna go ahead and put that quantity in here. 11, 193, uh, 11.93, I'm sorry. Uh, and then, so we got a lot of that information in here. Uh, so boom, boom, boom. And then I'm gonna scroll down to section B and just kind of look at some, I'm just looking over this a little bit. And it tells you where, you know, it actually tells you that this is gonna ship to one of DLA Depot in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, so you kind of know exactly what it's going to be shipping to. And, you know, sometimes I just throw that information, you know, like that, your notepad down here is just really for you to just put in all your notes. Okay. You know, so shipping to that way, you don't have to keep going back and forth to the solicitation document if you don't you know, want to. So it was all there shipping there. Cool, cool, cool. So we know we can get it as low as 1891. And you know that the past award was back in, you know, 2020 or whatever date that was. Um, mm -hmm. And so you you know that this is one that if the, if you're competing with that other, with the incumbent supplier, you're not gonna win this this opportunity, right? So the goal is to try to get your price lower than, uh, you know, much lower than 11.95. That way it'll give you an opportunity to put your markup on it, right? Right, right. So, but if you just wanna just get the wheels turning, why not, why not submit a bid? Um, Absolutely. So, you might say, hey, I'm gonna put a markup of, you know, 7% on it to see what, you know, I like to use, I like to use sevens in my numbers, man, because a lot of what we're doing, in my opinion, what I tell my team is that mm -hmm. there, there's a spiritual element to this, man. That's why I kind of, you know, had the training be more of like your fisherman, you know, just like, you know, you cast, and I'm not saying this is, you know, trying to get religious with you, but you're casting your net out there into the sea and you don't know what's gonna what's happening down below. You just know you're right. smashing your net and whatever God has for you or the creator has for you is what's gonna get caught. It's gonna get up in that net and get caught, exactly. It's gonna get caught. It's gonna get caught because it's for you. You know, it's for your company, right. for your family. So okay. I, I like to have some spiritual numbers, you know, going along with it. So I tell my team, use sevens as much as possible, <laughs> you know, okay. and, um, because it's, it's a very complete number. So that's just some superstition. Like, you know, football players, you know, they use a certain pair of socks to play foot, you know, games. 
right. this is what we do internally. So here's an opportunity where if with a market of a 7.77%, this is FOB origin. And as you saw on Zorro's website, I believe it said that's free shipping, I believe. Let me go back to there. Uh, it's Zorro, that's their link. And I think it says in stock, well, maybe they have a minimum, I think it's a minimum buy of 50 bucks or something like that to get free shipping. Um, but I mean, even if you wanted to figure that out, you can go ahead and put the quantity in here, mm -hmm. 11 93. And then it says, oh, now they're saying, hey, we got uh, stock. Stock. Oh, they, right. they don't have 11 93 in stock, you know? Right. So that means that, you know, like if you, they won't even let you put it in your shopping cart right now. So this is where, you know, getting a quote from them would be best. That way they know, you know, that you get a quote number and you can reference it in case you get an award. And it'll tell you everything. But I'll tell you right now, for this price point, Zorro, you'll have free shipping. Yeah. Okay. So they'll ship it to your office for free or if you want this contract. All right. Okay. And then you put a markup of 7.77. 7. So upon winning the contract, you would basically have to do the packaging, meet the packaging requirements to, to package all 1,193 face shields. And okay. looking at this image, you know, these are probably come in individual boxes. Mm -hmm. You would have to have 1,193 labels to go on each oh, one of the boxes for the face shields. Ah, uh, okay. And the way you'll know that is when you go back into your solicitation, it'll tell you in this section here, your packaging section, which is in section B, all this means something. These are little codes and stuff. And I think I actually have a YouTube video that shows you. Yes, sir. I saw that one there too. They're very informative. Yeah. And so the QUP, uh, stands for quantity unit pack, which is one. So that means that the government, the DLA, is looking for these to be individually packaged. Okay. Now, if the QUP said 10, then they say, hey, you could put 10 in one box and we'll be okay with that. But when they say QUP one, that means they want 1,193 individual packages. Okay, and what's that stand for again, that QUP? It stands for quantity unit pack. Gotcha. Okay, quantity unit pack. Okay. Yep. And then, so then the preservation method, this is all commercial packaging. All, I can just look at these, if I've been doing it for years, I just know that there's, there's nothing really special about this. So, you know, okay. sometimes you have metallic parts, they may be going on naval carriers. And so they'll have, you know, or you may have electronic devices that need to be in a static proof bag and things like that to make sure that, you know, no static electricity damages the circuitry. And the mm -hmm. DLA will ding you on those things. If you try to send something to them that says we need a static a static resistant bag and you send it in a, in a you know ziploc bag or something uh you they ain't gonna accept no go there's no go yeah um yeah. so the packaging specialist the, 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 that's what they get paid for to make sure everything is meeting in accordance to the terms and conditions of your contract you know but all that's in the solicitation up front so this right here just know that you're going to need a, a 1193 labels that's another okay. training within itself uh, because you know you'll have to understand how to do mil spec labeling as well absolutely um, and will I have to get that printer too once we go once I cross that bridge get that printer for myself for those labels uh no no you can use your standard printer uh, they okay. they're um you know like those Avery Denison labels that you can get at, uh, at your office depot yes right, you, know, right. you can get 15 labels on a sheet and there I think okay. they're like three inches by two inches tall and that kind of thing but that's expensive to go buy Avery De Denison there are other companies that you can find on on eBay and a place like that where you can buy them in bulk for cheap you know like once oh, okay. in the label, you know, you know, they're real cheap. Right. Uh, if you go to Denison, they may, they may charge you three cents a label. You know, it's, there are places you can get them for is a fraction of a cent per label. Okay. Uh, and then everything from there would just be the ink that you'll have in your, your printer in order to print these labels out, you know? Okay. Yeah. So if I was ready to go, if I was all ready to go with that price right there, that 24.3 at Zorro, just go and give them a credit card, da, 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 purchase them. They'll send it to me, which is the origin. Then I gotta worry about shipping it out. Yeah, but I wouldn't even be using credit cards. With Zorro, that's why I say reach out to them to get a get, get a business account established and get you right. some terms. Because why use a credit card if you don't have to? <laughs> yeah, and I'm, trying, and I'm still trying to get line of credit. So I'm still trying to get I'm new at trying to get this get the purchasing the the, the items, you know. So why yeah, get so a line of credit, some type of of uh, advance or something like that? I'm, 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 I want to try to figure something out, you know. Yeah, so let me ask you this. Do you have a Dun & Bradstreet number? Yes. Great, so when you go to Zorro Tools, and I recommend you do that today, 
is reach out to Zora or tomorrow whenever you have time and just establish your very first business account with Zora because Zora okay. is like it's, they're they're just an essence Granger. They probably have ninety okay. percent of the items on Granger.com on Zoro, you know. Okay. So I would start there, establish a relationship with them. They'll, you know, apply for a, 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 a commercial uh, dealer account or a commercial account. Let them okay. know that you're looking for terms, and they'll ask you, you know, like what what credit line are you looking for? And you may say you can have five thousand, ten thousand dollars, just to kind of start you out. Okay. And they'll either say, hey, we need, you know, well, you know, your new account, we need to have a credit card on file, you know, okay. that kind of thing. So what they're going to do is just kind of want to establish, you know, a relationship with you. They're going to ask for your Dun & Bradstreet number, okay. uh, see if you have any credit ratings. And if not, they'll say, hey, you Which know. I do not. That, that's my only downfall. I don't have that. I'm trying to start. I started Uline. I did Granger told me no. And a lot of folks telling me no, and I don't have any of that stuff yet. I'm in the process of building credit now with Uline and, and uh, what was the other one? I can't remember the other one, though. But I'm in the process of trying to build that credit now on the business yeah. side. So even if they don't give you credit, let them know, I like to have credit card terms with you. And that way they can put a credit card on file and they'll open up an account. And so once you get a contract award and you put a PO in, they'll hit your credit card initially, but you got 30 days to pay your credit card. So okay. you're basically not out of pocket for direct money, you know? Right. And then once they see you're paying and you are got consistent orders coming in, then you can circle back to their accounts, uh, their, their credit, department and say, hey, look, you know, I've been rocking with you guys for three months. Okay. I've had a few orders come in. Hey, I'm interested in terms now, you know? Okay. And then they'll say, okay, well, you know, you say, hey, my credit card, I got a limit on it, my $5,000 limit. I got some orders that I can do, I can knock, I can do about $10,000 at a time with you, you know? Okay. And even if you get a bigger contract than what your credit card can handle, trust me, these companies want to make money. Okay. And so if you're able to, I've had, you know, six figure contracts where you know, we work with the vendor for the first time and I, I send them a copy of the contract. I say, look, the contract was awarded. It's a federal contract. No problem. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Now, let me ask you this right here. Is terms the same as net 30, net 60, net 90? Is that the same thing? Uh, terms. Because um, I heard you say that twice, though. Say, uh, say you want to get the terms account. Is that the same as net 30, net 90, or 60? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So net 30 means you have 30 days to pay them, net 90 30 days to pay them. Correct. So terms, yeah, basically you have credit terms, you know. Okay. okay. And then they'll let you know what the maximum credit limit that they'll allow you, you know. And right. so you can kind of buy as much as you can within that limit. And it's kind of a revolving line of credit. So they'll invoice you. You have 30 days to pay the invoice. And so long as you're paying your vendors on time, that's when you start to kind of develop a credit rating. Right. And then and that's what I'm working on now. Yeah. So I went and got approved with this. Can you see this right here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I went and got approved with this. I got a limit on this for 60K, this here, uh, American Express. But you know, they, and they do have, uh, 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 what they call it, a pay over time too. You don't have to pay it that month no more. So that's a good thing what they got now with this. Yeah. Pay over that's time. A, that's a great start. So you automatically got $60,000 $60, worth of, you know, credit line, line of credit right, right. there. You can, uh, you can uh, give that to Zorro. And you know, it's begin to establish that relationship with them. Okay, good deal. Okay. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. So, so in essence, that's kind of how you do this. And so now, what you will do once you get all your information loaded in here, it tells you what your potential profit could be. You got all your pertinent information. Now you click save. And okay. once you click save, it'll save record, save successfully. You'll see this number change from thirty-one to thirty-two. Mm -hmm. Now, what you can do is go into your window. Uh, well, it's just, we, okay, go to your output. We're gonna bring you, open up your output screen. And then we're gonna hit refresh. And again, you, you know, you got some, you got some stuff that was in there that you may not need in there. If you want to delete it all, just highlight that. And just delete one at a time. Okay. You don't need, yeah. One at a time. And that was just something that we did to kind of help with the training. But you'll okay. see down here. As That's us right there. There you go. He's right in like there. That. So now what you can do is go back to your window and we know that's log file number 31. You can say edit. They bring in 31 again. Click OK. Cool. I like it. I like it. Let's say that the DLA wants to, let's say you didn't win this one and they want to, they want to, you know, there's another opportunity a month from now, two months from now to rebid it. They may have a, a lower quantity. But just, just for the sake of this training, let's say that they don't want to buy that many. They only want to buy 250 or 150. Okay. So now, your pricing probably is going to change with your vendors because their economies of scale. You probably get a better price with more quantity 
but let's say that they only only wants to buy 150. You know, maybe they they missed their mark by 150. So okay. you come back into this <laughs> log files, you bring back up, change this. Let's say everything else stays the same. Now you click the button save as. Mm -hmm. So what that's going to do is give it a new log file number such that when you go into here, go to output, it won't override your original one. Let's hit refresh. So now you're going to have log file number 31, which is your original one. Okay. That's your domain. Right. All right. Okay. So it basically, it saves the same thing, save as, you know, automatically for you. Okay. Or you can override it. So let's say 32, let's, okay, let's go into your log file 32. We're going to go back to prior pricing sheet and we're going to bring up edit number 32. We're going to click okay. And you'll see it has 150 here. Let's say you want to change it to 750. And so let's say you want to change it from 150 to 750. So mm -hmm. instead of clicking save as, we're going to click save and it's going to override that record. Okay. So now record number 32 becomes, put 32 back in there. It brings it up as a 750, you know. Okay. So that's a nice little functionality too, because you'll that notice really once, you, once you get certain innocence that you win, you have the ability to continue to win them over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's this this software becomes very very important because it lets you know what you did a year ago or six months ago. You know, right? So, yeah, I just have to remember how to retrieve it off those twenty two pages that section A, section A, and section B to, to plug the numbers in in the thingy right here. For example, the M, the, the manufacturer caves. Well, we know what that is. The unit measure, that's how many you want. The unit weight is approximate. Uh, okay, and then the description, the name of it, the date, NA, NSA, the same as the other one up top, part number. Okay, I think I got that, okay. Yeah, all right, cool. All okay. right, and, uh, and then it lets you know, you know your vendor source, and sometimes, you know, you put your vendor's email address, like if you're working directly with a, you know, a, an account rep, you, you know, so. Okay. This tool is designed for you to make it your own of how you're running okay. your business. And they give you that transparency too for the CEO officer too, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Now, I know you did one other thing too about the uh, the, the post award request. That's, 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 we're not at that yet, I know. That's like if I get awarded, awarded the, the bid, and then, and then the contracting officer come back and say, no, no, I, we got to notify them and say the quantity changed. Like that example you gave us in the uh, e-learning one you gave us. Uh -huh. So so we can't do that. Seven, they wanted 750. We can't do 750. We got to go back to the post award request, click onto the hot links, go down in the bottom, click on that and say, hey, the price will still stay the same, but the quantity has changed. Yes, I yeah, that that's, what, okay. that's what you do a par. Yeah, so that's yeah, after you got the contract award and things like that. And again, you know, uh, I would I would suggest like if it's you know you can re directly working with the contract officer is always the best thing. You know, okay. Uh, but sometimes they're they're a little elusive and it's hard to reach out to them. And you, you know, if you need an answer real quick, you know, by all means, man, schedule schedule some time with me where you know I can get in and share okay. straight, kind of you know help you out through that process as well. That'll work. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. A lot of the DLA, man, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of my clients and, and, and you know, that I've worked with, they, they try to figure it all out real quick. And this is not a sprint, it's a marathon, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And so, and so I, I would say that I'm here as a coach to kind of guide you along the race. Okay. But there's going to be so many different nuances that come up. It's not going to be cookie cutter at any stretch of the imagination. There's going to be mm -hmm. basic things that you'll learn as time goes on, but then there's always going to be a little different nuance. You know, you may have the unit of measure changes. You know, they they, they want a case of these instead of each. And, you know, you'll just kind of know how you, you'll learn as you as you do as time okay. goes on. Yeah. Okay. So let's say, for example, that, that, that the marker with the increase, I know you say you you, you, you like to use the seven, the seven, seven, seven you got there. So let's say if I was to say 10, is 10 out of the question? Is no, that being a little no, too greedy? No, no, it's it's whatever it is, this whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be ten percent, you put ten percent in there. I mean okay. I was just sharing, you know, just a, like a philosophy that I yeah, share yeah. things and things, you know. So let's say if I got a competitor now, he said seven, I say ten, he's gonna get it. Correct? But they're going for the lowest possible price. Yeah, the, the DLA, they typically award on price. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. And this, 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 this price is and delivery. Yeah. Right. And this is like a three day turnaround time because it's automated, correct? Uh, this may be, yeah, I think this is one of those automated awards. Um, yeah, sometimes they'll tell you if it's one of those automated ones or not. I'm not exactly sure, but most of the DLA is, I can imagine that this one, because it's going to the DLA, uh, to the, uh, to New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, they normally put it right up in here. And the screen is kind of off. It, it's, it's blurring this out for me. I can't see yeah. everything over here, but sometimes they'll put it in here too. They'll say it's an automated. Uh, yeah, you got to read through here, technical data. Blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, I'll just have to wait for it to reach the contracting officer, then they're going to have to make that decision. Yeah, here it is. It's right here. Oh, that is automated solicitation. Yep. Can they first artist on that required the micro purchase cost may be awarded. Well, hold on. No, no, no. That's not that. They're just telling you fast pay does not apply to the solicitation. Yeah. Yeah. So, and again, as you're re, as you're kind of familiarizing yourself, because I don't even, I don't even read solicitations much anymore. Our system, you know. I, I have other people that do this for me now, <laughs> so okay. I don't read a lot of these. I, I've read thousands of them in the past, but um, a lot of it is just kind of reading through and skimming. And yeah, so this is the first article test. Yeah, so this would be a fast, fast award, uh, an automated award, I should say. Okay. Uh, likely, because it's, it's a commodity type item. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can, it's a face shield. Um, Simplified acquisition. So for simplified acquisition, the revision. So it's saying four and all this kind of stuff. It's not saying it's directly a simplified acquisition, but you said you had the DLA. Uh, is this the DLA one you had open? No, that's the other. Yeah, further up to the top. Come on up about 10 more. All right. This one. There you go. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they'll say if this, I'll put it in here too. Yeah, they did put it in there. And yeah, probably it's logged you out. Yeah. Okay. Um, what did that U for stand for right there? Yeah. Right there, uh, that yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the U stands for, believe it or not. But, 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 but I could quote, I could, I could uh, quote on that, right? The ones yeah. I know I can't quote on is women on the ones that I'm going to have a certification with. Yeah, but you can still quote on because th that vendor may not even quote. You know I mean, like a service disabled veteran or a woman owned business, okay. they can't even quote. Put your quote in. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Next question too. Next question, a million dollar question I've been wanting to ask you. So right, at, right on that same line, slide it to the left again at the at the issue date and return date. That return date says 10-3. I've been seeing stuff with like two way past. If it's in that category, that means it's, 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 it's up for free bid, correct? Yes, as long as you see this button right here that says quote, mm -hmm. you can quote. All right, okay. so the DLA, the, a lot of this is automated, computerized systems that are saying, you know, return your quote, your price by the third. So right. with this, letting you know, COVID affected the government in a major way. They are yeah. understaffed right now. Okay. We have about 900 solicitations that are that still have not been awarded this year that we have wow. bid on. So we're still waiting. Uh, we got a contract uh, a couple of weeks ago for a bid that we put in back in June. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, the government, we only told them it was good for 30 days, but they still gave us a contract. So once I got the contract, I went back to my supplier and my quote had expired with him as well. And since so he re-quoted it with the manufacturer, come to find out the price had doubled. Oh, so wow. A lot of the DLA is having some problems, you know, but I okay. think it's a great time for new companies to get involved because mm -hmm. if you can get your solicitations out, if you get your quotes out there, just kind of build a database of quotes and they, the contract officers will reach out to you. They'll say, hey, we okay. see that you quoted on this, the quote and census expired. Can you, can, we're ready to buy now. Are, okay. are you able to keep your price the same? And if you say yes, chances are the next day you're going to get the award. Got it. You know, so I just say bid what, wherever you see, even though it says return by, because today's the fifth and it's the third, I would go ahead and mm -hmm. bid this. I would bid it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would bid it. I would bid the price that you see in there because you got enough markup. Chances are 
Zoro probably is not going to change the price that much. So okay. I, I would say go ahead and bid it today. Why not? Okay. Yeah. And it'll feel good to get a bid out there, you know? And then- Yeah, but I can't wait to get my first one. I'm ready. I know I'm way behind, but you know, I didn't want to do nothing yet until I understand everything across the board, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And uh, okay. and again, you're not going to understand everything. You're going to understand it in chunks. Keep that in mind, Donald. Okay, okay. Is it possible to, it took me 20 years to kind of get to this. And not say it's going to take you 20 years, but you know, it, it shouldn't take that much time to understand enough to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's just going to be quoting every day, you know, and I always tell my, my clients and students to make sure you do at least 10 quotes a week. If you can starting out, you know, make okay. it part of your life, make it part of okay. your business life. You know, even if you have a nine to five and stuff like when I first started doing DLA uh, contracts 10, 20 years ago, I had a full time job working for Anheuser, work, I'm working for Boeing. Okay. And so I'm doing my daily duties with Boeing. I would get home at night and make sure I do at least five bids. I would, yeah, I would meet with Granger. <laughs> I would meet with Granger for lunch and okay. got Granger right there. and things like that, and start to mm -hmm. kind of develop my my my, my you know my uh, my vendor base over time. Right. Okay. And then one year, I ended up making sixty thousand dollar profit in oh, addition wow. to my corporate salary working for Boeing. Okay. Just doing contracts on the, on the side. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, and like I said, I'm retired now. I don't have nothing to do. I don't do nothing no more. So I'm, this is all I could dedicate my time to do. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the perfect time to get involved with that. And uh, sure. yeah, but we have reached the end of our time today as, as it relates to uh, our scheduled uh, meeting. Uh, hopefully, okay. I answered uh, some of your questions. At least, kind of get the ball rolling on your very first RFQ. We hope that our video has both educated and inspired you to grow more with us. Feel free to explore our NMS eLearning Systems product solution links as provided below. If you are interested in learning how you can obtain a discounted subscription with SAI Global's featured DLA data management online software tools, including additional world-class one-on-one contracted training services with the NMS eLearning Systems team, please email your request for additional information to fed.contracting at nmsupply.com today. Please be sure to click both the like button and subscribe button, including the notification bell, so you can be alerted when our new exclusive NMS eLearning Systems video content is posted to empower you.